instant runoff voting has a problem when there are two centrist candidates mixed with some minor candidates. It's known as the center squeeze effect, and it can be illustrated with a mock election for the capital of Tennessee. Imagine that the state of Tennessee is having an election for the location of its capital. Tennessee has two large cities, Memphis and Nashville. These will represent the centrist candidates. However, it also has two medium-sized cities that are further away from the center. The size of the four candidate cities is shown on the map. In a real election, we vote for the candidates that are closest to our ideas politically. But in this election, the citizens vote for the candidates that are closest to them geographically. Thus, their first choice is the closest city, their second choice is the second closest, their third choice is the third closest, and the fourth choice is the city furthest from them. The map shows how the voters in each area rank the candidate cities. Knowing this ranking, we can follow the instant runoff voting algorithm to determine the winner of the election. In round one, you just take the first choice of all the voters and you get these results. If this was a regular choose one voting election, we would stop here and Memphis would be declared the winner. But the instant runoff algorithm says that we don't stop until a candidate has at least 50% of the vote. Therefore, with instant runoff voting, we proceed to a second round of vote counting. The algorithm says to eliminate the lowest vote getter and instead count the second place votes for that candidate. That means Chattanooga is eliminated and its second place votes are counted. In this case, Knoxville is the second choice of the Chattanooga voters because it's the second closest city to them. The algorithm causes Knoxville's total to go up by 15% and you get this table. The second round still finds Memphis in first place, but without the 50% to be called a winner. Knoxville is now in second and Nashville has moved down to third place. Again, no city has more than 50%, which means that instant runoff voting requires another round of vote shuffling. In this round, the city with the lowest number of votes is Nashville. Instant runoff voting therefore eliminates Nashville and tries to count its second place votes, which was for Chattanooga. Unfortunately, Chattanooga has already been eliminated, and the algorithm has to count Nashville's third place votes, which are for Knoxville. That means that Knoxville's total is increased by 26%, giving them 58%. We have a winner. Knoxville becomes the new capital under instant runoff voting. This example election illustrates the center squeeze effect of instant runoff voting. What happened is that the two main candidates, Memphis and Nashville, weren't large enough to get 50% of the vote on their own. That caused votes to be shuffled to the outlying cities. Eventually, the votes were shuffled to a more distant candidate. In real life, having two main candidates is fairly common. A famous example occurred in the 2009 mayor's election in Burlington, Vermont. Burlington had just begun using instant runoff voting when the center squeeze effect caused the main candidates to be rejected in favor of a minor candidate. Burlington repealed instant runoff voting shortly after this election.